Spiders and Leeches, Episode 10, It's Not Real. Liars and Leeches is a horror audio drama intended for mature audiences only. It contains sensitive topics including discussions of gun violence as well as depictions of domestic violence, stalking, and murder. More specific details about each episode are listed in the show notes. Listener discretion is advised. Tanya stood in the middle of the crowded grocery store, trying to catch her breath. From all around her, people pressed against her as they moved past. There were more people in the store than could fit, but somehow they all seemed to be ignoring Tanya. No one reacted to her cries. No one looked at her. They simply surrounded her, trapping her in place. Hello? Can you help me? Please? No matter how loudly she screamed, Tanya didn't see a single person turn towards her. It was as if she didn't exist. Tanya was terrified of the man, but as she stood in the crowd, a new fear began to creep towards her. She'd avoided places that were this crowded for so long that her blood ran cold being surrounded by so many people. The press of bodies was overwhelming, a sea that threatened to pull Tanya under. There was no sign of a clear way to exit either. If the man attacked, Tanya would be trapped. Oh, God. Natalie, where are you? Tanya pressed herself against a wall of shelves and sank down, curling into a ball and covering her ears. She closed her eyes to fight back her tears, hoping that this was all some horrible nightmare that she would wake up from soon. I can smell you. Tanya looked up, half expecting to see the man towering over her, but he was nowhere to be seen amidst the crowd. Where are my friends? They're here too. And they're fine. For now. You're sick. You know that, right? You're a monster! Sticks and stones break my bones. Tanya noted how, for all the man's bravado, he still sounded like he was in pain. No matter what he was up to, they'd still managed to injure him badly. There was still hope. You don't sound so good. Maybe you should just give it up. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? I'm nowhere near done, Tanya. I'm always going to be here, but you put me in a a forgiving mood. Does he actually think I'll believe that? Your fear is so tasty. Your little friends and, and the traitor, they're just appetizers. But you, you're a steak dinner. You're the best meal I've had in years and I wanted to finish it. I wanted to devour every last scrap of you. I thought you said you were in a forgiving mood. Ha, <laughs> temper, temper. <laughs> I'm getting to that. If you leave now, I'll let you all go. You can run away, run as far as you like, who knows? Maybe someday you'll be too far for me to find you. But you'll never know for sure, will you? <laughs> or you can stay here. Try to fight. Try to find me. That's when I'll pick you off one by one and I'll save you for last. Because I want you to know exactly what it is. Your arrogance cost you. Leave my friends alone. What are you going to do about it? You're a coward. Curled up on the floor like a frightened child. You can't stop me. None of you can. 
but you're especially pathetic, so... I'll give you a minute to think, and when you've made your decision, well... We'll see what happens next, then. <laughs> because <clears throat> if you take too long, I might lose this particularly generous feeling. For a moment, Tanya let herself panic. She was trapped in a store where no one saw her, far from her friends. There was only one option in her mind, and that was to leave, to get out, and to run. To hope that somehow she'd be safe somewhere else. Safety, Tanya thought. Safety wasn't guaranteed anywhere. She thought of Tammy and Jim, who'd been supposedly safe the day they died. There was no promised place where Tanya would be safe from all dangers, be they leeches or crowds or anything else. She couldn't run from her fears because if she did, she'd be running until she died. And she was tired of running and hiding. She wanted to take a stand. No. She would finish this. She would finish this tonight. Tanya took a moment to focus, picking herself off the ground and glancing around her. That was when she realized a store was packed as though it was the busiest day of the season. But the store had been closed and locked when they'd passed it to get to the man's lair. So either he had them trapped and unconscious for hours until he could sneak them into the store on a busy day, which made no sense because surely he would have just killed them in that time. Or this was a trick. It's not real. None of this is real. As she said this out loud, the person in front of her flickered and disappeared. Uh, what the fuck? After she caught her breath, Tanya realized the person had disappeared as soon as she'd focused on the market's inconsistencies. It was all in her head. Okay. It's not real. It's not real. Another person flickered out nearby, disappearing as if a switch had been flipped. Yes! Tanya focused next on Natalie. She thought of her friend's courage and loyalty, and how desperate she was to find her. She thought of Vix and Sean, of how they risked their lives to help her. She imagined all three of them standing in front of her, squeezing her eyes shut in concentration. Come on. Come on. When Tanya opened her eyes, she saw three paths through the crowd. The people had either disappeared or had moved to the side. The shelves in the way had also disappeared, and the floor had transformed from the tile to the cold, damp rock of the cave. Tanya pushed herself to her feet, looking from path to path. At the end of each, she could see... Natalie! Fuck, thank God. All three paths led directly to the corners of the store where Natalie, Vix, and Sean had been. Natalie ran towards Tanya, pulling her into a one-armed hug when she reached her. I heard that fucker on the intercom. We can't just run. I know. Vix and Sean were at Tanya's side now, too. Vix was standing close to Sean, and he was looking at her for answers. Vix was smiling slightly, looking at Tanya with something close to pride. Does anyone want to tell me what's going on? Yeah, I'd like that too. Tanya's fighting it. What? Her fear. The man knows what she's scared of, so he created this to make her panic and throw her off her guard. It's a mirage of sorts. Then why isn't he just, I don't know, murdering us while we're trapped in Tanya's mind? It takes a lot of power to make a mirage like this. He's focused on scaring Tanya so badly that she'll leave. And if that happens, I'm sure he'd heal and be after her again in no time. If Tanya's able to destroy the Mirage, it means we can get to him again. Are you sure you can do this, Tanya? Yeah. I can't run forever, right? It's never gonna be easy, but I have to stand up to it. It's the only way to make it a little better. That's my girl. You won't be alone in this. If we all focus, we can put a stop to this faster. But isn't it just 
Tanya's fear? We're all stuck here, aren't we? You're brave enough to do this, Sean. I know you are. I'll never know what you see in me. I see my best friend. Vix took Sean's hand and then looked at Tanya. Got any tips? Think about where we were. The cave and, and that leech cowering in the corner. We're only in the store because he wants to use my fear against us. But it won't work. It's not real. 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 Nat? Here it goes. It's not real. Tanya forced herself to focus, to push self-conscious thoughts and fears out of the way. The sounds of her friends around her and their very presence was comforting. Tanya's fear was still there, but even so, it was lessened by the sheer fact she was not alone. The store began to fully disappear as the rest of the crowd vanished. The fluorescent lights gave way to darkness, the white walls to the stone of the cave, and finally they were back where they started. Remind me to never do that again. The man was slumped against the far wall, panting and staring at them with undisguised loathing. I told you to run. Now I'll kill you all. You don't look like you can even get up. Bitch! Be careful. He's still dangerous. I know. Clutching her knife, Tanya walked over to the man. She crouched down, just out of his reach. The man weakly swiped at her, but she easily avoided it. Careful. She's got this. The man hissed again, clearly knowing the battle was lost. His eyes flickered between the group, finally focusing on Tanya. I've killed and fed on soldiers, kings, and gods. And this is how I die. Beaten by three pathetic humans and a traitor. Yeah, it must suck. I can still smell your fear. You pretend to be brave, but deep down, you're always going to be a scared little girl. And that's all you'll ever be. With those words, the man lunged, the claws extending to slice into Tanya's throat. Tanya! But Tanya was ready. She swiftly ducked and brought her knife up, driving it into the man's stomach. <laughs> The man twisted and writhed as black blood poured out of the wound. He fell to the floor, twitching as he slowly began to still. He looked up at Tanya, and for a moment, he almost looked scared. You. You. Tanya crouched down to hear what he had to say, knife still at the ready. You won't be safe. There are other leeches out there. And no matter what victory you think you have today, it doesn't matter. He exhaled and fell still. As Tanya stood up, looking down at his corpse, the man's human form began to fade away, leaving a puddle of black sludge. Ew. Ugh. What did he say? Nothing important. Let's go. Hey there. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. I was so worried when we didn't hear from you. Yeah, I was working on some stuff. I had to do it alone. I understand. So, how are you doing, Tanya? My friend Natalie said it would get easier. The grief. And I didn't think it ever could, but she was right. It doesn't go away, but I've learned to live with it. Tammy and Jim, they died, and nothing will change that. 
but they wouldn't want me to give up my life. They'd want me to keep fighting and to never give up. I'm sure they would. I have to keep moving forward for them. It's the best way to honor their memory. Hmm. Well, last time we spoke, you mentioned being afraid. <laughs> I did. And how is that fear now? It's also something that got easier. I can't just let fear control me. It only attracts more fear, I guess. I can be scared, but I can stand up for myself. I am so glad to hear that, Tanya. Are you going out more? I am, actually. The barbecue at Tanya's parents' home was full of life and love. Tanya could tell Vix was enjoying it. She was basking in the sun, a huge grin on her face, and an empty plate in front of her. At her side, Sean was nibbling on some food and eagerly chatting to Tanya's parents about taking photos for their upcoming wedding anniversary. Natalie was nearby, working on her third helping of ribs. How? How do you eat that much and not get sick? It's a gift. Baby girl. Come over here. Tanya's father waved both Tanya and Natalie over. He was beaming, one arm around Sean's shoulders in a fatherly gesture. Ever nervous, Sean almost looked pleased with himself. Gotta say, Sean, Tanya always makes good friends. Even if your girlfriend won't eat anything. <laughs> I've eaten, I promise. She winked at Tanya, who smiled as she looked back at her dad. How'd you all even meet? Oh, um... Well, Sean and I met through our shared interest in the paranormal. <laughs> like what? Werewolves? Mothman? Exactly like Mothman. And how'd you meet my girl? Uh, w well... It was for, a. Uh... It was through me. I was working on a story out in Michigan, and I met these two. I knew we'd all get along super well, so I was like, you gotta meet Tanya. First night we all hung out, we stayed up all night. Telling ghost stories? Yeah, totally like that. Frank clapped Sean on the shoulder and moved to talk to other guests. As he passed by Tanya, he stopped. I'm glad to see you here. I'm glad to be here, Dad. As Frank walked away, Tanya turned to her friends. You're still thinking about him. The man. <sighs> it's kind of hard not to. You know what would fix that? More food. I'm serious. I keep thinking about what he said. That any victory was just temporary. Me too. Honestly. I just... I don't know how I can go back and act like everything's normal. I also keep thinking about Victoria. She didn't do anything wrong, and now she's going to spend her life locked up. And there have to be other people like her, like me out there. People who are suffering and who don't have any defense. So, what do we do? We could go public. Break the whole story, draw attention to it. People would know they're not alone. No, we can't do that. Why not? Would anyone believe you? Besides, if people did believe you, that public fear, that would draw more leeches like him out to the now terrified public. It'd be an all-you-can-eat buffet. Plus, I'd probably get found out and thrown into a lab to be studied. Call me selfish, but I really don't want that. Me neither. Then what do we do? We can't just pretend it isn't happening, and we can't just go off on our own trying to stop them. What if we did? What? We could go off on our own. Form a little group determined to protect people from leeches that want to hurt them. And with what resources? Well, we have one on our side. And you and I are badass journalists who can do anything we set our minds to. And Sean... I can help! Yeah, you can! It's not a bad idea. I mean, we'd be putting ourselves at risk, and who knows what else is out there, but it's not a bad idea. You're on board? I love humanity. You're all so cute, and you've got a goodness in you. I'd like to keep you all safe. Besides, my favorite thing in the world is a human. Oh! Oh, you mean... <laughs> You're a dumbass. What do you think? Tanya looked at her friends. Her fear crept up once more, telling her about all the dangers that would be present if she tried to fight against malevolent supernatural creatures. She'd have to risk her life and the lives of her friends. 
But Tanya had decided to never let her fear dictate what she could or couldn't do ever again. I'm in. When do we start? Episode 10, It's Not Real. Starring Ryan Reed as the narrator, Kendall Bird as Tanya, Newton Newt Shotokati as Natalie, Lindsay Wells as Vix, Jason Lasky as Sean, Jamie Richard Stewart as The Man, Jair Bush as Teresa Keller, and Gerald Hill as Frank. Liars and Leeches was produced by Hemlock Creek Productions. The story was created by Marissa Ewing and the script written by K.J. Scott with script editing provided by Meg Williams. Dialogue editing, mixing, and mastering was done by Marissa Ewing. Sound design by Melissa Pons and music written by Nico Vitesi of We Talk of Dreams. Additional recording assistance provided by Jordan Alexander and Trey Baker of Music City Studios. To learn more about the show, cast, and crew, visit www.hemlockcreekprod.com. That's hemlockcreekprod.com. Thank you for listening. We will return next year for Season 2.